Imagine this, you wake up in your home, something's different. The street outside, flooded, not with rain, but seawater. You step down, your feet touch salt, your floorboards damp, no tsunami, no warning. Trust the silent invasion of a warby world. And this isn't a scene from a sci-fi movie. This is Indonesia in crisis. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Judges, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Adinda Shaningyani and I have the great honor of representing Universitas Tanjung Pura in the Pemilihan Mahasiswa Berprestasi 2025. And today, I stand before you not just as a student, but as someone who speaks for the next generation who will inherit the future shaped by the decisions we make today. According to the United Nations Environment Program and World Resources Institute, Indonesia is the world's largest archipelagic nation with over 17,000 islands and 108,000 kilometers of coastline. But what makes us beautiful also makes us vulnerable. In fact, according to the Global Climate Risk Index, Indonesia ranks among top four most vulnerable countries in the world. Every year, Jakarta sinks by up to 25 centimeters, and if we do nothing, by 2050, one third of our capital could be submerged. And this isn't just theoretical, because it happened in the Mak Central Java. Over 2,000 hectares of land have already disappeared into the water, and more than five villages have permanently abandoned. To response, Indonesia is building one of the largest infrastructure defenses in Southeast Asia. The giant seawall or NCI city stretching over 700 kilometers along Java's northern coast. And it's worth over $80 billion and in addition, over 40 million lives are protected and trillions infrastructure assets secured. But the real question is, a wall might stop the ocean. But it cannot stop the crisis because the real war is not on the shoreline, it's in our energy system. And right now, over 60% of our electricity still comes from coal, one of the dirtiest fuels on earth. Indonesia is the top fifth largest coal producer and is the largest thermal coal exporter in the world. Coal is not just a carbon, it's asthma, it's heart disease and it's shortened life expectancy. And guess who suffers the most? The urban poor, the marginalized, and the voiceless. And as a medical student, I see clearly that climate justice is health justice. We cannot cure illness if we ignore the environment that makes people sick. We cannot build infrastructure without asking who it protects and who it forgets. And that's why I chose to act. During the last major flood season, I volunteered in my local community and I saw how homes were destroyed not by the water, but also by helplessness. Families lost not only belongings, but also the access to clean water, food, and health care. I also joined a climate health education campaign where we taught families in flood prone areas how to prevent respiratory illnesses, the kinds that worsen with mold, smoke, and poor air. And as someone who active on social media, I use my platform to spread awareness, fight disinformation, and remind others that climate is not someone else's problem. It's ours, and we're not powerless. So what can we do more? First, speak up for policies that put climate equity at the center. Second, educate our communities, not with fear, but with facts and solution. And third, hold leaders accountable. Climate promises means nothing without pressure because the question is, the sea wall might keep the ocean out, but only our action that will prevent and stop the flood of our consequences. In 2045, Indonesia will celebrate its centennial of independence and the real question will be, will be an island of nation thriving in harmony with nature or will be a nation's drowning beneath the weight of its silence? The answer doesn't begin on the government plan. It begins here. It begins now. And most importantly, it begins with us. So start your action. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.